Hi everyone, welcome to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast, your daily audio summary of the latest news reported in the Ukrainian media. My name is Artem and here is the news. For 435 days, Ukraine defends itself against the forces of the Russian invasion. President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky visited the Netherlands, reports Interfax Ukraine. He gave a speech, there is no peace without justice in Ukraine, in The Hague, where the International Criminal Court is located. Zelensky called for the creation of an international tribunal for the crime of Russian aggression against Ukraine, but not on a hybrid format. The crime of aggression has led to others. This is the beginning of evil. It is possible to achieve responsibility for it only with the help of the tribunal, said the president. He also met president of the International Criminal Court, Pyotr Hofmansky, and secretary of the court, Osvaldo Zavala Guler. Zelensky noted the need to increase pressure on Russia to stop mass deportations and create a universal mechanism to protect children. He also stressed that bringing to justice all those guilty of war crimes against humanity and genocide of the Ukrainian people is fundamental for Ukraine. Prime Minister of the Netherlands Mark Rutte said that Russia must not win the war and it must be brought to justice for the crime of aggression. Following the meeting with the President of Ukraine, Rutte also said that the Netherlands will do its best to ensure justice for Ukraine. Both countries signed a joint declaration expressing their determination to create a comprehensive system to hold Russia accountable for aggression against Ukraine or in the world. Russian officials and other persons who planned, prepared, ordered and committed crimes should be held accountable. Such a system, the authors argue, should consist of three levels. First, the investigation and prosecution of international crimes at the national and international level. Second, the establishment of an ad hoc special tribunal for the crime of aggression. And third, ensuring full reparation of harm suffered by Ukraine and the Ukrainian people through the establishment of the international compensation mechanism. While in the Netherlands, Volodymyr Zelensky also conducted a joint meeting with the Prime Minister Rutte and Belgian Prime Minister Alexander de Croo. Zelensky called on Belgium and the Netherlands to expedite the supply of armored vehicles and aircraft to Ukraine. According to him, there is not a single rational justification to refuse Ukraine these jets. The head of the state also discussed with the prime ministers of Belgium and the Netherlands the future of Ukraine in NATO and the EU. As he said, Ukraine should legally become part of the alliance. Rutte said that at the upcoming NATO summit in Vilnius, its participants need to ensure clear steps towards Ukraine's future membership in the alliance. He stressed that the Netherlands supports Ukraine's ambitions on its way to NATO. De Croo announced that the Belgian government is preparing a new package of military assistance to Ukraine, but provided no further details. He added that Belgium intends to develop a mechanism for the confiscation of proceeds from frozen Russian assets in order to send them to help Ukraine. The Prime Minister recalled that in March last year, Belgium seized 197 million euros in proceeds from Russian assets. This money is used only to support Ukraine and to help Ukrainian refugees. According to De Croo, since the start of the full-scale war, Belgium froze 58 billion euros of Russian assets, including that of the Russian central bank. Today, Belgium is exploring how it can use the proceeds from these assets to support Ukraine's recovery, he said. The US focuses on providing Ukrainians with means of anti-aircraft defense, reports Ukrainform. White House National Security Council coordinator John Kirby emphasized that thanks to air defense provided to Ukraine, most of the cruise missiles launched at Ukrainian cities in the last 48 to 72 hours were shot down. He also noted that for its part, Washington made every effort to provide Ukraine with the means to carry out a counteroffensive. This includes, among other things, armored vehicles, artillery, air defense systems, ammunition, as well as training which was organized for many Ukrainian brigades on the territory of other countries. Ukrainian forces shot down a Turkish-made Ukrainian Bayraktar drone over Kyiv yesterday, reports Gromatske. It was done because the military lost control over the drone during a scheduled flight in Kyiv Oblast. Since then, controlled presence of an unmanned aerial vehicle in the sky of the capital could lead to undesirable consequences, it was decided to destroy it. The Air Force suggested that this was most likely caused by a technical malfunction of the drone. 
there were no casualties. We would really appreciate if you could recommend us to your friends and family as well as share information on social media. This way more people would learn about the podcast and truth about Russia's invasion of Ukraine. U.S. Director of National Intelligence Avril Haines believes that Russia is unlikely to be able to conduct a significant offensive in Ukraine this year due to a lack of ammunition and manpower. Regardless of whether the Ukrainian counteroffensive is successful, reports European Pravda. According to her, if Russia does not initiate a mandatory mobilization and secure substantial third-party ammunition supplies beyond existing deliveries from Iran and others, it will be increasingly challenging for them to sustain even modest offensive operations. Haynes also noted that Russian troops are preparing new defensive positions ahead of a Ukrainian counteroffensive and that they gained less territory in April than in any of the three previous months. First Lady Olena Zelenska arrived in the UK and visited the residence of the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak at the invitation of his wife Akshata Murti, reports Ukrainska Pravda. Olena Zelenska is expected to attend the coronation of King Charles III this Saturday. The Highlights from Ukraine podcast is a commercial initiative of just two people, and we need your help to grow. Share information about the podcast, rate us in the app, subscribe to our Patreon. With your support, we are getting better. We call on you to demand from governments of your countries to impose the toughest sanctions possible on Russia and its citizens to stop their invasion of Ukraine.